um, are working in the field of construction, uh, medicine, technology, um, um, all that stuff, all the stuff you can imagine. Also defense, um, product development, uh, photonic, um, you name it, uh, 76 institutes, uh, 76 uh, different um, fields that we are working on. And in, uh, in Dortmund, um, our field of research is logistics and supply chain management. Uh, we there have over 400 employees and um, um, we, we are uh, going to um, to, we are going to, to develop logistics and supply chain management um, with uh, and trying to figure out the full potential for, uh, especially for Germany, but also uh, for Europe. Um, and that's uh, how we do it. We, um, we write concepts, studies, and roadmaps. We build demonstrators and uh, we um, uh, improve and support um, the, the, uh, the maturity of products with our partners. Um, in fact, we are divided into three departments in Dortmund. We have the department for enterprise logistics, where I come from, and we also have the, the blockchain focus. We have the department for transport, environment, and mobility, where we also focus on new mobility concepts. Uh, how will the future of mobility and transport look like? Um, 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 we, uh, we, we, we try and uh, we, we uh, do research on new battery technology and that stuff. Um, and we have our workshop, the uh, technical side of our institute, where we uh, build and develop new intralogistic systems such as uh, autonomous uh, robot systems, um, autonomous warehouses. So you see, we are using a wide branch of technologies here, like blockchain, like artificial intelligence. We develop IoT devices. In fact, we will see of them uh, later here in my presentation. And um, all to, uh, to have progress uh, and bring logistics and supply chain management forward. And uh, that's quite important. Um, logistics and supply chain management, a short definition. Logistics is the holistic planning, management, coordination, execution, and control of all internal um, uh, flows of goods, information, and uh, finance in a company and with the supply chain side we also have the cross-company flows, the value streams between the companies. So that's a short uh, differentiation uh, between logistics and supply chain management. Um, and um, especially in Germany, um, logistics is one of the three uh, largest economic sectors um, after automotive and trade. And uh, this means um, in Europe where we have uh, uh, um, um, uh, logistics market that amounts up to uh, 1.2 billion euros. Uh, one quarter of that uh, amount um, uh, lies in Germany. So Germany is a logistics and supply chain nation, um, but it gets harder and harder to to um, have all the um, the stakeholders. Um, 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 mentioned to all the um, mentioned and to 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 um, to find out um, uh, it, it it's getting more and more dynamic in logistics we have new players uh, we have new new technologies we have new requirements of the different stakeholders um, and the approach that uh, we are working on is to have an integrated view on uh, supply chain and logistics that uh, goes uh, uh, from the supply chain uh, down to the shop floor. And uh, we are here to try to, to figure out the interactions between uh, a robot and uh, a company that lies next to the company where the robot is working in. And here uh, we uh, see blockchain technology as a technology that really um, needs to um, where we, where we want to uh, figure out the full potential of the technology and um, 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 getting progress in logistics and supply chain management. We see some examples, um, most of them, you know most of these, uh, these examples. We have track and trade cases, uh, origins proofs, uh, transparency in supply chains, automation, data marketplaces, collaborative services, all the things 
you also have in the construction field um, and um, the so same same kind of cases uh, but it, but in some ways differently um, detailed in the field of logistics uh, compared to uh, the construction area um, how does the future of logistics and supply chain management look like what does the future hold um, here we see a vision that we uh, that we are working on uh, where you can uh, see a typical um, logistics process there's contractor a and contractor b they're doing a business uh, with each other and uh, they uh, they want to to get the material uh, from contractor B to contractor A. And um, with blockchain, we have much more parties being able to uh, get integrated into that process. We have insurances, we have payment platform, we have financial institutions. Um, so not only that we get away from a paper-based logistics and supply chain management, but also get uh, via smart contracting uh, to an autonomous uh, logistics and also one of the um, 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 biggest potentials that we have seen is um, that we have an integrated um, um, integrity of, of uh, service provision integrated with payment and also invoicing all happening in one moment and that's only that only can be done by a blockchain. Um, I now want to get a little bit more into details, into the use cases that we are working on. We now have seen uh, why logistics and blockchain is a great fit. Now I want to show you how the projects look like that we are working on. Um, in fact, the projects all have, um, they have, they have a different uh, technology uh, readiness, a different maturity. But um, it can be said that all of the projects that we're working on always have a, a consortium of partners behind it. So there's always a community behind this project that say, we want that. Not only one company, but minimum three to four companies that we're working on um, just to, uh, to establish a blockchain network later, where we, during the, the project, see uh, what kind of blockchain protocol is needed, what kind of um, uh, technology should be used, uh, should it be a permissioned or permissionless blockchain, um, all that st stuff, what we figure out during that project. Um, we later come to a uh, um, project with, with a really high maturity, but I want to start with um, the project that we, um, that we first had uh, an eye on, as um, you know that, like in the construction area, also in logistics, we have um, highly regulated environments. One example uh, that I have here for you is the field of um, dangerous goods transports. Um, dangerous goods uh, is one of the most regulated logistics discipline, um, and uh, that's good uh, because the regulations are designed to protect people uh, and the environment. Um, when we have a dangerous goods transport, every transport needs a transport document. And these transport documents need to be drawn up before the transport starts. So we have, uh, yeah, following here, we have a really um, inflexible uh, way of logistics. As before a truck leaves uh, a company, and has dangerous goods on it, like uh, petrol or, or um, chemical, something like that. Um, it is clear what route the truck uh, needs to take, and is not. It is not allowed to to stop at another customer to maybe uh, give him some of the uh, the, the goods he he is transporting. Complete inflexibility uh, due to. Um, the um, lacking transparency that authorities uh, wish to have. Um, for example, uh, when you have an accident or something like that, they need to know whether, whether the firefighters ne uh, need to have uh, foam or water to uh, go for uh, an accident and uh, help the people 
um, uh, working on uh, the fire that is maybe happening. Um, we here developed um, a solution where we have a, a multi-user port, portal where next to uh, senders, uh, shippers, vehicle drivers, also uh, authorities uh, have the possibility to, um, to always see what a truck is transporting. So when there is an accident, the firefighters and authorities know what the truck was uh, loading before they go out to, um, to, to, uh, to help the guys uh, um, when, when an accident happens, for example. Yeah? Um, we here see also in the small video uh, a, a track and trace device that we developed um, that could be uh, patched on, on such an IBC container to, um, um, to um, um, measure uh, what temperature it is. Uh, there's also the possibility to have uh, via a, a matrix display um, um, show what ID an IBC container have, what is in it, uh, special dangerous good, co uh, good codes can be um, seen. And we also um, um, have connected this, uh, this PUC, the sensing PUC, that's how we call it, um, to the blockchain in this project. Um, so not only the multi-user portal that we developed, but also the connection to an IoT device that uh, we developed. Um, I mentioned, uh, uh, I, I go a bit into detail what uh, uh, respecting the developments, um, but in fact, um, I, I can say that now, all the things we see here are open source, can be so, uh, found open source, and all of you can use it to to, to uh, work on uh, on the solutions, uh, to do contributions, and to use it uh, to to make your own stuff, to customize it. Um, that's the approach we are working on. Um, why we do that, I come to that later. One another uh, highly regulated um, um, piece of logistics is customs processing. Um, I think all of you. Um, have some uh, um, experience with customs. Customs is a black box. You often do not know where and exactly what step uh, the processing is. Um, that's um, highly relevant for, um, for example, a production concept like just in time. You're waiting, exa for example, for for seats that come from for vehicle seats that come from the UK, uh, I need to get into manufacturing in, in Wolfsburg, for example. And you do not know because of customs processing uh, what the exactly status of the processing is and where the, when the seats do come. When when will they enter your uh, your company your your company door? Uh, and we here um, uh, developed a solution. Um, that um, 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 to, um, to to help um, this um, to to overcome this uh, information asymmetry. Um, you have different roles in our border tool. That's we how we call it. Uh, you can be an export clerk, you can be a truck driver, you can be an import clerk, and uh, we are as well in this project more and more. Um, no, otherwise, um, we are. All also working together, or try to work together with uh, with with the authorities here, with the custom authorities. Um, what that's a that's a struggle. Yeah, uh, we have problems to get, especially the German authorities uh, working together with us. Also, we have uh, main logistics providers um, as well as uh, companies from the UK, from Brazil, um, also from from Switzerland. Um, and but but the german authorities they are a little bit slow um, respecting the, to that solution um, the other um, authorities um, are open to it and we um, we are now um, testing this uh, solutions in an EPSI project with other uh, european uh, partners as well as international part partners uh, to figure out the legal aspects of that solutions. So um, if the German authorities want it or not, um, um, I think the project starts in November, they are now in. Okay, um, 
Another um, um, project I gonna, uh, uh, I'm going to present you is uh, the project that we call um, Digital Lifecycle File in Management. Um, it's about an annealing system that is used, uh, for example, in uh, big, big, uh, uh, big systems for uh, uh, in, in the petrochemistry. Uh, um, there you have uh, big steel tubes where, uh, for example, uh, chemicals flow through, and uh, when the uh, uh, chemistry system is built up, these tubes need to be uh, welded at, uh, at some points. And with this annealing system, uh, there is a, a kind of, um, they, they, they heat, the places where the uh, where the welding is done to get the tension out of the um, out of the point where the where the welding is done, and um, afterwards the the TÜV needs to get a uh, uh, the the um, a printed um, cause of the um, the heating of the of the annealing um, to to ensure that the annealing and the welding is 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 done right, and. Um, here we also um, 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 we also digitalize this old uh, annealing system that we see uh, on the top uh, with a little um, with a little uh, a mini PC, and now we are able to write down the the annealing uh, causes uh, directly um, um, directly to the blockchain, um, which helps that uh, not only the TÜV sees uh, uh, how the how the annealing is done um, but we can also implement a paper use um, a model that when an annealing is right done the provider of the annealing gets paid um, one one last example from the shop floor is uh, can be seen here it's about uh, cyber -phys physical production systems and um, the algorithm that lies behind this example um, is, um, um, is, 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 is quite uh, adaptable. We, have, we see it here uh, via, uh, Unity, uh, via a Unity simulation uh, that is uh, um, linked to a blockchain, to a Ethereum blockchain. Um, but we also do that same algorithm with drones that fly uh, through the air. Um, we're testing a warehouse systems here. And uh, the quite cool thing is that these uh, small robots um, are negotiating. Um, depending on the battery power they, ha they have, depending on the load that needs to be carried, um, depending on the distance one of the uh, small robots have to a load, um, they see who should do the job um, realizing uh, a sharing economy a sharing warehouse uh, in this case where you only pay for the things and the meters a robot does to carry your load. Um, we've talked about devices before. Um, we started uh, um, developing our first, first blockchain device, I think it was in the, uh, in the early 2020s. Um, we see that uh, the blue one there on the left, um, the first generation of our blockchain device, um, and it was meant to uh, be used in the field of medical uh, and, and food transport. You can use that, that a device which is uh, uh, a combined um, display with some sensors that can be uh, put it into a transport box. Um, the case was, the, the, the original case was in fact food and pharmaceutical transports and this thing was uh, de developed in exactly that time when we were not sure um, how long and up to which temperature, temperatures uh, COVID vaccines uh, would be uh, helpful. Um, um, there have been some tests uh, transporting COVID vaccines uh, with this uh, device, uh, but um, in the end, uh, we all know um, um, the, um, um, the, um, the temperature uh, was not a limiting factor for the, um, for the use and helpfulness of this, uh, this vaccines. Uh, we afterwards divided the, um, 
the, the idea of the first blockchain device into two um, devices. Uh, uh, above you see, you see a device uh, that is called bring your own device. You can use, uh, implement a light client, especially in the field of, uh, for example, in the field of uh, dangerous good transports on a smartphone or on a tablet. And we put all the sensors into the PUC um, to also be able to uh, for sensing in in quite hostile environments. Um, the name PUC, you all know what a PUC is uh, from the ice hockey, and uh, this is a very um, um, uh, uh, stable and and well constructed uh, piece of um, piece of technology. You can you can really play um, hockey with this thing. Uh, it can fall down, no problems. Um, and uh, the cool thing is that you have this uh, matrix display and, and can customize it saying what the PUC uh, should show you. Um, there are GPS sensors uh, implemented, temperature sensors. Um, and the cool thing about this is you also find the, um, the, um, the, the manual, the, the construction manual for, for this PUC um, uh, in our repository that I'm going to show you later. Um, so we have all these cool um, ideas and all these cool cases for using blockchain. Um, but how do, do we get it into the industry? How do we get it into uh, into the use by the companies? Um, one one idea is of course open source, uh, and that's that's the way we are working on currently. Um, one a short story maybe you know these two guys uh the rover is called perseverance and the small helicopter is called ingenuity and especially the rover is uh, constructed to um, do research for microbiological uh, life on mars and the small uh, helicopter he's, he's, he's helping him he's um, doing some pictures and try to um, they, they uh, develop the or nasa developed the helicopter um, to do some uh, tests how um, 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 conventional uh, flight uh, systems from Earth uh, would, uh, would do it on Mars. Um, they, they said it would be great if this, uh, this helicopter could uh, take off, fly uh, some meters into the air, um, and uh, afterwards uh, land without uh, being completely uh, destructed. Um, in the end, uh, this helicopter made, uh, I think, nearly one kilometer on, Ma one, one kilometer on Mars, and um, it's still operating. Um, NASA engineers and developers were very happy that uh, this, this helicopter worked so well. But also over 12,000 developers via GitHub who did contributions to, uh, to that helicopter. So it's, not, uh, it's, it's an open source development. This, um, this helicopter. Quite cool story. Um, now we need to decide whether we have uh, such cool developments uh, like NASA have, or is there another way to find, um, uh, find communities to do uh, contributions and to work and use uh, open source? Um, we did a, um, in fact, most of the, um, the commercial software we are using today in our everyday life, um, such as Facebook, Google, Amazon, um, I think most of them are still uh, based on the Linux kernel with it, with, uh, that is also open source. Um, so we did, together with Akatech, we did a study to find out how we can use or implement um, open source in the right way. In, uh, in, in, in the industry sector, in the sector of logistics and supply chain management um, with a special focus. Um, and it was found that um, the dominant fear to use open source um, of the companies that we, uh, see, that we have in focus um, is that international competitors could exploit this uh, openness um, to, um, to force their market positions. So um, the, the companies um, uh, fear that their intellectual property get in the hand of other companies. Um, that's why they don't want to use open source. Um, okay, clear, but how we can uh, overcome that lack 
that we have, for example, or especially in, in logistics, um, that uh, every company, each company is developing uh, own solutions for certain services that all the companies in common use. For example, track and trace systems. You all know different track and trace uh, systems uh, be, uh, from, your, from your everyday life. You, you know the DHL. Uh, um, uh, tracking um, numbers, um, you know it from UPS, you know it from, um, you name it. They all all have that, and they all develop develop the things uh, for their own. So the idea here is to um, reduce resources by working together um, in the way in a way that um, uh, until one special um, moment the companies work on commodities. Um, so um, they, uh, they, they work on that commodities. They say, we need that commodity, that special commodity, for example, track and trace, to, um, and, and work on it together to save money, to save resources, and to be faster. And from a, a, a defined moment, they can use this open source software to customize it and uh, um, to do the further work uh, on their own. Um, with that idea, uh, we uh, founded, uh, together with uh, four of the uh, biggest German uh, logistics providers, namely um, Daxarenos. I think it's the rain, isn't it? Yeah, I think it's just the conditioning or the panels are switched on, so you can just ignore that. Yeah. Sorry, it's other stuff. I think um, we had a mail um, and they told us that they switched them off because they struggled with these panels for heating and cooling. I think they refill them now, maybe it's because it's there. I think there's no danger. I guess we can continue with Okay. Yeah. So we founded this uh, uh, Open Logistics Foundation that we see here, uh, where the mission is competition. Uh, open source over classic collaboration, digitalization can't be achieved in isolation. Um, the idea is to work on these commodities together um, to find out in ideation processes what are the right commodities and to, uh, to, to join resources um, to, to get things done together. Um, it's uh, a non-profit organization and the Open Logistics Foundation um, works in a, in a, a special re repository. Four minutes, yeah. Uh, works in a special re repository. It's called the Open Logistics Repository. Um, and the good thing here is that uh, you find um, um, smaller base components that we see here but also uh, food solutions that we've seen before, like the uh, customs uh, processing software, such as uh, um, dangerous goods software. Um, and they all the software, uh, as Fraunhofer is the main provider of the software, um, um, is all um, um, uh, connectable, for example, to, to GAIA-X solutions. They are developed under, under, um, under, under, under the, the rules that we today know uh, what the international data spaces or uh, GAIA-X um, want to, um, to ensure that we have them working in, in a bigger European uh, environment as well. Um, we have the, the manual for the sensing poke, IoT blockchain connectors, light client services that we use for the um, bring your own device and so on. And you can use and download all that stuff, work on it on your own, but you can also do contributions in the repository, working together with the companies that are members of the Open Logistics Foundation. Um, here we see a small, um, 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 uh, I give you a small insight of one working group. It's uh, uh, Open Customs Blockchain. Uh, that's how the working group is called. We um, have, um, I think, it's about uh, nine participants of this working group. The lead uh, is uh, Lies by Renos and ILS Customs. So, um, in this working group, Fraunhofer is always a minor partner. They do the, uh, they act as a neutral partner, as a mediator, but. Uh, 
um, the, the main work is meant to be done by the companies themselves. Um, we just provide the environment and the, um, the, the, the techniques to become able to work together because also for them it's, new, it's a new way of collaboration, this is competition way. Um, and um, it's up to now, it's, 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 it's running quite well. Um, they, they also are quite nice to each other, they are open. And um, we have the feedback that in, in many cases it's it's much more than than working on on, on rules and documents. Example for for Dean ISO um, standards and really creating a kind of de facto standards that is after the open source work is done used in the core solution by many um, ben, many uh, providers and many companies. <laughs> Um, how does the future work look like? Um, we are, are still working on the cases we have seen. They are not uh, completely done yet, as the working groups are also uh, still running. Um, but there will be a, a focus uh, more and more on, uh, on the topic of twins, uh, twin uh, transition, where we say that uh, we need to get blockchain uh, uh, more and more um, in a way to, to ensure uh, 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 transfer to uh, sustainable but also to a uh, digital um, future with blockchain. We have um, found that especially there needs to be some teaching done, teaching and coaching of companies uh, to understand what blockchain really is, how it can be used, uh, what uh, good business models look like. Uh, transparent circus is a topic. Uh, we're working on uh, uh, um, digital product passport, distributed care. Um, you all maybe know the Lieferketten Sorgfaltspflichtengesetz, pr pretty German phrase. Um, new value change where we have a look, for example, on H2. How can we ensure that the H2 we are use is really green? Um, how does certificates you, uh, look like here? And also, um, how can we ensure that uh, blockchain gets more uh, resource efficient? And that's it. Thank you for your attention. So maybe I will start. Uh, thank you very much for uh, the presentation and the uh, yeah, inside of uh, logistics in general. Um, so I have a question about the blockchain behind it. So uh, is this always a public blockchain? Yeah. You are developing a new blockchain. I know there are also some, some yeah. startups from uh, Fraunhofer. They yeah. are providing own blockchain technologies. Yeah. And so how, how you solve this? It's all, you always say, OK, mm -hmm. maybe it's a public blockchain. And then you have, of course, to deal with all the mm -hmm. other difficulties you yeah. have with the public ones. The, uh, the, the first steps were made with closed blockchains, um, used uh, Tenem and Cosmos, but um, that's mainly because of uh, the, the um, conservative companies uh, that we are working on um, don't really trust the public blockchains uh, when we started, but it, it gets more and more to public blockchains. We're using, for example, um, uh, a quarter deri uh, a derivative of Ethereum, uh, Quorum. Mm -hmm. um, with uh, the financial partners, we are doing um, many projects with uh, Commerzbank, for example. Mm -hmm. um, there we use the distributed ledger a quarter. Um, and um, we try to be uh, in some guy technology open. Um, there are some new projects uh, that will focus on, um, uh, or the, that we work together with Hedera Foundation. Um, yeah, so it's it's up to the case. So yeah, and uh, I, I really like the idea to have a blockchain device, uh, so something physical. Um, so about the book, uh, so. So it sends some, some data or transactions directly to the blockchain. Maybe you say, okay, I want to measure the temperature mm -hmm. every five minutes. Yeah. And then, of course, uh, it will store the result in the blockchain. Is this the, the yeah, case? We have, this? We have, uh, yeah, we have a side way over the, the device. 
that lies, uh, for example, in the front of the, the truck, and the poke gives this information to the device that that's how it's happening uh, um, um, currently. As the poke is not, uh, uh, it's possible, but but uh, how we have implemented uh, today is the the way first to the device, uh, respecting the uh, the blockchain part. I just see that Daniel also raised his hand. So you have a question, please. Yes, uh, thank you very much for the great presentation. I'm curious when you talk about the open source um, cooper cooperation or cooperation, or I don't remember the exact word. Have you also thought about creating kind of crypto economic incentive systems to reward people that contribute to the tools? in a in a very uh, meaningful way or do you prefer to keep it uh, more open source and kind of uh, as you wish uh, contributions um you're talking about um to incentivize contributions yes uh, it, for for the development of the tools and the packages that you have in the open source community mm -hmm. yeah um, currently the the focus is uh, on the um we, we like to have contributions by the uh, companies uh, of the working group. Um, so, um, to to and they also do in the the ideation process say what they're working on and what they uh, want to in some way um, uh, what the strategy of uh, um, 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 of an open source solution should look like. Um, they 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 pay. An, uh, a yearly amount to to have this uh, to to get in this uh, condition. Um, that's that's how the in in a short uh, the the business model of the Open Logistics Foundation uh, looks like currently. Um, so uh, the, the, maybe this is answers your question. Yeah, I was I was sorry if I was unclear. I meant actually encoding in the in the tools themselves a way that rewards developers uh, or uh, for making contributions um, and opening it up more broadly than just the consortium that pays but actually kind of a um, business model that that uh, incentivizes uh, other developers to yeah. also contribute if okay understood sense. yeah, yeah. Um, the contributions uh, currently uh, uh, come mainly from um, um, companies that are in the working group or uh, initially from uh, uh, employees that work as Fraunhofer. Um, it is it is currently not like you 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 have it on GitHub that we have the 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 quite, uh, the community that we uh, that, that that is um, in, in some way. Um, uh, um, 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 fu fully, fully open and, and fully reached, um, as we have here quite industrial cases that maybe uh, most of, of of private coders and developers are not so interested in. Um, but I, I really think your idea is is quite cool, as we could have a bigger community and much more contributions contributions by incentivizing also uh, developers from from other companies or, or private developers. Um, but it it's not not on, uh, on the agenda yet. Thank you. Yeah. Hey, uh, thanks for the nice presentation. And uh, I think uh, using the blockchain for supply chain is uh, very exciting and uh, very useful. Uh, but uh, practically, I wonder, yeah, for example, you demonstrate as a platform for managing the, the blockchain uh, for supply chain. But in the actual case, who should manage such a uh, platform? Because, for example, if we imagine that the uh, uh, logistic company like, uh, or maybe Amazon, etc., mm -hmm. then they would usually their their logistic is only one item. So, mm -hmm. for example, they purchase a thing, and then so for each item, then they can have their own platform. But for example, if we apply this one to construction project, then uh, for example, for one construction project. Then usually I've seen contractor would like to do so because uh, the con from contractor point of view, 
for procurement, then maybe they will buy concrete, they will buy facade, they will buy different things. And then if uh, the facade uh, delivery will be managed by another, uh, by one logistic, concrete, another logistic, and then so different supplier, different logistic mm. companies, then they will have different uh, platform for mm. the blockchain, stuff like that. So that's what they will have their own platform. So uh, for example, if we apply to a construction project, then should be a project based supply chain blockchain platform or still go back to the traditional way that the yeah. logistic company have the blockchain platform or if two platform how to synchronize them mm -hmm. yeah um, in, in in the cases i mentioned especially in the the transport cases we also have a, 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 a digital freight paper case that is also working in the in the open logistics foundation um, and um, we are figuring out that here with the, the, the consortium that is uh, in, in the foundation. Um, how could um, a platform be, uh, be operated? By, by whom? Yeah. Will there be a neutral instance like the Open Logistics Foundation? Will there be a shared um, a platform by all of the um, partners? Um, we are figuring that out currently. Um, and on the next step, we uh, we uh, we try to uh, the, the business model behind it. Yeah, um, I, I I do not have a, a concrete answer now, but we learned from the past uh, from uh, from cases like uh, uh, mass trade lands that you really need uh, um, to to implement not only the trust and data sovereignty into the technology itself. But also into the the, the governance. Um, I, I don't know whether I asked the question clearly enough. But uh, the, my, my point is that, for example, for a construction project, then usually contractor yeah. will do the procurement, and then for a construction project, then maybe they will buy different kinds of materials. Yeah. And then each material have its own supply chain. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And then so contractor would like to have the blockchain platform, I've seen that. And then because they want to have a centralized platform with blockchain capability to manage all the supply chain of that project. But the supplier may maybe you know, use Amazon or use uh, maybe different platform or different suppliers, different logistic companies. Okay, so but from logistic point of view, for example, maybe Taobao or something like that, then they also have their own platform. Yeah. And then they have, they can also embed a blockchain. You do. Okay, so, so the, the point is that, for example, if I am the PM yeah. of the co uh, conscient project of this building, let's say, mm -hmm. then should I have a blockchain platform, supply chain blockchain platform for this project, regardless of the logistic company? Yeah, no, I'm, I'm not sure as when, when, do you need a blockchain platform in your own business, in your own company, or will, is, does it all, only make sense when you have the different parties that don't, do not necessarily trust each other? I think it also depends on the case, but maybe we can go a bit deeper into that, maybe at lunch. Okay. Yeah. Okay, okay. yeah, so I'm just noting the time and I think we need to go with the first presentation. Yeah. Uh, so, um, okay. So. Yeah. Uh,